My name is Ken Kaplan, I'm from BPD, which is Building Partnerships for Development in Water and Sanitation. Okay, well nice to meet you, and I'm wondering right now, what exactly are you doing with uh, your small towns uh, project? Okay. It sounds interesting. Yeah, so basically we've had a, a grant, we've been working with WaterAid over the last year to um, try to understand what's different about small towns as compared to rural and urban. So what distinguishes small towns from other types of settlement patterns? and what are the implications of those differences on water supply and sanitation. Mm -hmm. And now, what were some of the discoveries? Because I know you, you've looked at a lot of different towns and you've found some things which were generalizable, some things weren't. Yeah. Can you give an example? Okay, so basically what, we're, what, what we kept coming back to is um, how connected a small town is. Because all of the influences on a small town will be either through demographics or through economics or through autonomy and politics and decision making. So, for example, um, one of the aha moments that we had was about whether a t how um, kind of distant a town is from the center. And I don't mean necessarily kind of in terms of miles, but in terms of kind of political influence and things like that. Okay. So from the center, like the, the center big meaning, capital, exactly. Or, yeah, yeah okay. that's right. So, meaning um, Dhaka. Yeah. For example, in, in Bangladesh. So one of the things that we, we kept coming back to was if a town is very isolated, yeah. it will it may not have a lot of influences that allow it to innovate. On the other hand, if it's very isolated, it may be forced to innovate because it's got no choice. So one of the projects that we one of the towns that we visited in Bangladesh was in essence so far away from the center, so far away from Dhaka, that in essence, it was stifled. It had no connection with other ideas, no connection with other mayors, no connection with other other um, ways of thinking. Yeah. So it, it was. It felt like it was kind of stagnating in its so own. Were you looking at the water and sanitation um, services, or did you have a particular focus there? Yeah. And yeah. what was the impact on that? Yeah. So we were looking at both, and again, we were just kind of trying to understand what the questions were okay. at this stage. So we have. We haven't really started actually okay. experimenting with different types of approaches yeah. in small towns. So, but we were looking at both water and sanitation, and actually we found that the responses will be different for water and sanitation, but the questions are pretty similar. So you would still look at kind of demographic changes, you, yeah. which impacts on land values. Uh, who's moving into the town? Is it uh, an agriculture based? Are they other urban urbanites, or you know, who, who are they? Well, what what do these small towns look like? Are they um, you know, population-wise, do they have informal settlements? Are they um, um, typically now yeah. in these six countries you looked at? Yeah, I'm not right. sure which ones. I mean, they do really vary. So, depend. You know, if you go to Uganda, a small town can be ten thousand people. If you go to Bangladesh, a small town can be eighty thousand people. So it's all relative to the capital city. And so we kept kind of bumping into the request that we make a definition of small towns based on a geographic yeah. uh, or uh, a demographic type of uh, population size, etc. Um, and we just couldn't do it because the differences were too great between Madagascar, Uganda, and Nepal, Bangladesh. Um, what was the rest of your question? Well, whether there are informal settlements okay. or what, how does it look like? Okay. Can you compare it to the yeah. large capitals? Uh, not n no, in essence you can't because you don't have the same kind of slum situations. You don't have the same kind of demographics, but you do have um, people moving in and kind of taking over land and, and trying to find ways to claim land. Um, what that has tended to happen, what that has tended to mean, is that you've seen land prices really skyrocket by five or six hundred percent over a five-year period. Okay. And that's that's substantial. That's substantial. And what, just really quickly, just to wrap it up, what's going to be the impact then on uh, future grants and projects once you think you've identified the questions? What's going to be the impact on future grants? I think yeah. what it forces. Our approach. Right? Yeah, I think what yeah. it forces the water sector to do is to look outside itself. So all the kinds of issues about um, social capital, issues about land tenure, uh, land rights, issues about the relationship between small industry in a small town and uh, uh, the function of the town with water supply and sanitation services. So it really forces us to kind of ask much bigger questions than the kind of standard hydrology questions or engineering questions or even willingness to pay questions that we normally spend our time, ask, time asking.